morning, everyone. Welcome to. Damn, now I have camera set up. I don't know which one is principal camera. But welcome to a new episode of Channel Orange. I'm your host, LK the Guy the D, the Mobile. I'm here with amazing friends of mine, as you can see in front of the camera and behind the camera. Five squad all over the place. Uh, before I get into the introductions, I wanted to let everybody know that you can reach us at Linktree forward slash fire squad f i y a s q u a d uh podcasts available everywhere videos available everywhere merch coming soon well more and more coming soon um i am here today with c jizzle live from the office with, with the sharp with the, with the crispy hairline and the crispy shape up what are we puffing on today? Puff go puff. I think we got some cherry cam in here. Cherry cam? It's a maple. Fish or cannabis. Got some Snoop Dogg, diamonds and sauce in here as well. You know, mm-hmm. we got some stuff for the night, for the, for the evening. You know? Okay, okay. Look All right. Here. Also, we have Freak the Villain. Freak the Freak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, why are you guys saying the I mean, he you doesn't know, have to be. Yeah, he yeah, can be wherever you want. Camera stuff. I don't know exactly what my instructions you can, are. You can do it. You can do anything what up, you want, bro. It's your boy, Therese, <laughs> a.k.a. T. Reezy, a.k.a. Young Obama, <laughs> a.k.a. Spider-Man, a.k.a. Peter Parker. You know, we out here. We're doing some dash with C. Jizzle and Hook, you know. And uh, it's about to be a good time. I yes. Think, possibly. Maybe. Yes, it is. It is. Hopefully. God willing. All right. Let's get down to business. Uh, Steve Nash got fired. Yeah. Today. Expeditiously. Expeditiously. Do you think it happened on time, too early, or too late? Uh, well, this is interesting. I don't think he was a very good coach. I mean, he, Ime Udoka really just thraxed him in the coaching, you know, battle last year in the playoffs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, he's a rookie coach. A lot of people, even he brought up kind of the white privilege in his, um, Hiring, the fact that he's a first-time coach, he got a really good job with two superstars when, you know, mm. most people, your first coaching job is pretty shitty, and you're usually yeah. with a bad team, and, you yeah. know, and even he's just like, you're a lot of qualified black candidates out there, sorry, <laughs> I got the job, I know how fucked up it is, and then he turned out to be an inexperienced coach, and then when Kyrie publicly comes out, it's like, hey, we don't need a coach. That's a slap. Yeah, that's kind of undermines your authority a lot, that's where it's like, they just hired in the star players, like, we don't. We don't really need a coach. I could be the coach. KD could be the coach. That, like, so that doesn't bode well for your franchise. Because I had a conversation with my man earlier. He was like, uh, "What makes Steve Nash a bad coach?" I was like, "Look, what if we don't know he's a bad coach, but he has been handed a situation with high millionaires, high billionaires, probably." And KD, Kyrie, and at the time, James Harden for like half a second. Now it's even worse because James Harden has turned into Ben Simmons, which is ex- like a ben million Simmons. times worse. Like, so yes. it's like, so he has like, these type of characters. You got to coach Kyrie, yeah. Luther King, and yeah. Ben and Bench Simmons. That's, that's, like, that's one of those are going to be a title of this episode. So. Kyrie, Luther King. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> um, yeah, like he. Like, you, you can't be, like, a brand-new coach and coach megastars like that who are that good and that paid already. Who has that? I mean, not even those things. Cause there's other superstars that are actually tenable, like uh, Stephen Curry. But these are the Madonnas of the NBA, basically. The Divas. I mean, there were big reports that they were trying to get him fired in the offseason, or yeah. KD at least. So it's like, I mean, this isn't super surprising, like... And now they're looking either Quinn Snyder or Ime Udoka to replace him, which is really, really I fucking funny. Quinn Snyder was out there. The mafia balls himself. And the meme, whoever did the meme of at least like where the Nets front office basically made the calculation like, well, he didn't fuck my bitch. They are a wild. Yeah, player. pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, for real, he didn't yeah. fuck my bitch, so he can come yeah. on in. Come on in. He can come on in. Uh, yeah. I mean... The, the, the net story, like, for them to have James Harden, Kyrie, and KD, and Steve Nash, all in, like, two or three years, and most of which is gone by now, is hilarious. It's the most hilarious story up there with uh, your team, actually. Um, 
having three MVPs on the same team and they all go separate directions. <laughs> and that shit is hilarious. Man, four and three right now. I'm talking about we got, we got a better record than a lot of teams right now. Yes. Uh, even the uh, even the Jazz is good. The Jazz uh, are incredibly good. That's the most shocking story of the NBA so insane. far. Because the Jazz were expected to be a gutter ass team after they blew up their team this offseason. They traded their two stars. Mm-hmm. They got rid of their coach. They're in full rebuild mode, just taking pieces from other teams. Laurie Markin in here, a yeah, fucking Laurie you know, Bird. his name is yeah, Laurie Bird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, he's looking like Laurie Bird now. Holy shit, that man's playing his ass off. His name is Laurie Bird. Utah is six and two. They are beating good teams. They're out here. Laurie Markin looks like a goddamn superstar. He's out here dropping like 24, 12, hitting threes. It's 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 shocking, but that's why the NBA is so fun. And that's why it's not about just stars all the time. You can just assemble a bunch of good players, and if they're well coached and have good chemistry and play good team basketball, they're going to win some games. And that's what we're yeah. seeing in Utah. The Utah Jazz without Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert has a better record than the Lakers. The Lakers fucking suck. I mean, a lot of teams got the better record. <laughs> they, the Lakers have won one game so far. Like, what the hell? Oh, most of the league has a better record than the Lakers. That reminds I damn near have a better record than the Lakers. Because <laughs> what you told me about Kawhi Leonard has been ringing in my head. You saying he's uh, you, you said he's AD with cornrows. I didn't say that. <laughs> 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 you gotta attribute that. To me. <laughs> you said they're the same player though, right? They're similar. I mean, as far as being injured, AD might be more durable because Kawhi yeah. is fucking playing twenty minutes a night every five nights. But basically. that's the thing. Somebody, I mean, it was a, I think it was a sports report or something. They said Kawhi's knee is not has been better since Toronto. In the well, fall. it seems like it. I mean, they're very, they're so fucking cautious with this man. It's it's very worrying. Where it's like, can this man play a whole season of basketball? Like, you know, they said that drone is toast. And I'm like, damn. They invested the whole franchise in him, gave the keys and the money. Aaron brought Paul George over here. Your shit is toast. We'll see what the Clippers have. They're just they're just up in the air. We got to see about the health of their team. We already know they're good if they can stay healthy, but that's a big ass if, especially when you add John Wall to that mix. He's I don't have playing really well, but you know the Clippers are my team, and I don't have any faith in them being healthy by the end of it. I have no faith. John Wall, oh uh, fucking Paul George. And Kawhi, the three most injured motherfucker. <sighs> I'm stressed out. I think my Thunder are four and three. Just it's Thunder on four and three without Chet. Shouts to y'all. And the Orlando Magic are the most entertaining team to watch right now because they got Bol Bol playing point guard, which is the, the the best thing I've fucking ever seen in my life. Their fucking starting lineup has Bol Bol, Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, and it's it's glorious to watch seven foot two bowl bowl bring the ball up the court after the tip off and just play point guard for the rest of the game. And I've been saying bowl bowl is fucking nice. He just has some injury problems, but like he out there hooping for the magic. So shout out to bowl bowl. Wow. Seven foot two just out there running point for no fucking reason. They're one and six. Is it working? No. But is it entertaining? Hell yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. So <clears throat> transitions from sports. We have to talk. This is a very important two weeks coming up because uh, Gotham Knights just came out. Bayonet is about to come out. Or Sonic Frontiers you know. comes out next week. Who? Sonic, Sonic Frontiers. That comes out next week. Oh, wow. Sonic Frontiers, God of War next week, Black Panther next week, and Pokemon. Damn, that's uh, a stacked week. Yeah. I'm stacked kind of week. exhausted hearing it. Yes, <laughs> it is very exhausting. So, which one of those items are you the most excited about besides Black Panther? For me, it's Pokemon. But I have a very special relationship with Pokemon. As before air, you saw me just running competitive battles. Like, I'm a competitive online Pokemon player. Yes. I'm very serious about my battles. So, every time a new generation comes out, it's a momentous occasion. Like, because we've been on the old gym for the last, like, three years and stuff like that. Good DLC. It's the first time Pokemon had DLC last last go-around. And the DLC was pretty decent. Like the first one was all right, and the second one was actually pretty pretty good. They've improved upon it. I like the concept of bringing in more Pokemon like that post game to give you more possibilities, some extra storyline. Mm-hmm. So you know, Scarlet and Violet look unique. They say there are three separate storylines. This is the first time we have online co op. We're mm-hmm. like through the story where I can hop in with my friends and we can explore the same world like you're talking about. With